Zlatan Ibrahimovic is one of the greatest strikers ever to grace the football pitch. The six foot four Swede transcended what was deemed ordinary. He exuded a colossus of charisma, a level at which fans and media envied and scoffed at. Zlatan's incredible athleticism made him well renowned for scoring the most outrageous acrobatic goals and possess some of the deadliest shots in the world. His illustrious career spanned 24 years from 1999 to 2023, playing for the likes of Barcelona, Manchester United, Juventus, PSG and Milan. Zlatan scored 511 goals in 866 games at club level and scored 62 goals in 122 games for Sweden. Zlatan has 13 league titles, 11 Ballon d'Or nominations, Goal of the Year awards in three different leagues, multiple World Team of the Year selections, a Puskas award and a Hall of Fame spot on AC Milan, PSG and Malmo. But crucially, Ibrahimovic missed out on the biggest prize in club football, the Champions League. How on earth did a man so talented play for some of the biggest teams in the world fail to lift the Champions League? Zlatan Ibrahimovic was born in Malmo, Sweden on the 3rd of October 1981 to a Bosnian father and a Croatian mother. Growing up, he would play for a few local teams in the city of Malmo, before finally settling at the Malmo Youth Academy. He nearly gave up on the dream of playing football for a job at the docks. But after being convinced by the manager to continue playing, Zlatan signed his first professional contract with the Swedish club. Almost immediately, he was being sought after by clubs around Europe. Arsene Wenger tried and failed to lure him to Arsenal at age 17. But in 2001, Zlatan eventually would move to Ajax for 8 million euros, a club well known for developing young talent. And it was at Ajax Zlatan would have his first taste of Champions League football. Initially, Iber got little playing time on the manager Cole Adrians, but when he was sacked in November, new manager Ronald Koeman put Iber into the starting lineup, just in time for him to win his first of 13 league titles. Making his Champions League debut the following year, Iber scored twice in a 2 1 victory over defending French champions Lyon. Three more goals later and Ajax were into the quarter-finals to face Milan. Despite a goalless draw in Amsterdam, Milan got the better of the Dutch side, 3-2 on aggregate to advance to the semis to eventually lift the trophy. OK, first goal wasn't too bad. In 2004, however, Ajax failed to make it out of the group stage, but that didn't mean Ibra wasn't impressing. On the 22nd of August, Zlatan scored one of the goals of his life. He picked the ball up from the edge of the box, pumped fake twice, before sending both the keeper and the defender to the floor and slotting the ball home. Teams across Europe were now desperate to sign Zlatan, and one of those teams was Juventus. Zlatan was now in a contending team. Juventus were a team two years removed from losing the Champions League final on penalties to that same Milan team that knocked out Zlatan in 2003. And now he is in a team with Nedved, Turam, Del Piero, Buffon and many more stars. Ibra scored 16 goals in the league, but none in Europe. He started the season with eight assists in his first 14 games than none for the rest of the season. Nevertheless, Juve made it to the quarterfinals, where they fell to Liverpool, who'd also go on to lift the trophy. The very next year, Juventus were on fire in the league, losing just one game on their way to another title at the moment. In Europe, 
they narrowly avoided being upset by Werder Bremen in the round of 16, scraping through on away goals, where they met Arsenal. Across the two legs, three red cards to Nedved, Camaronesi and Zabina, coupled with no goals, saw the old lady bow out at the quarterfinals again. But behind all this, Juve were mired in one of the biggest scandals in European football history. Five teams from the Serie A were accused and found guilty of various forms of match fixing, and Juve were the biggest culprits. The punishments included both the 2005 and 2006 titles being stripped, a 75,000 euro fine, and immediate relegation to Serie B. Although some of the stars were willing to stay at the club to help gain promotion, Zlatan wasn't having any of it. Both him and his agent Raiola were determined to find him a new club. And in came Inter. For a fee of 24.8 million euros, the Lion himself was now wearing the black and blue colours of Inter Milan. Under the management of Roberto Mancini, Ibra found his striking boots again, 15 goals in just 25 starts in the league for the Scudetto winners. And despite dropping the first two games in the Champions League group stage, Zlatan was once again in the knockout stages, where once again he failed to score, and once again his team fell short at the first stage. The next year, in 2008, his exceptional strike partner Hernan Crespo was back on loan at Inter and Ibra signed a new contract that would take him into 2013, making him one of the best paid footballers in the world. And Inter were back on top. Another league title for the Nerazzurri, thanks to 17 league goals from Zlatan, where two of those were on the final day of the season against Parma to wrap up the title. And one of those gave him the Serie A goal of the year, where against Bologna, Zlatan who was tightly marked by a defender, inexplicably scored a scorpion-style volley with his back turned to goal. In 2008, Zlatan won both Serie A Football of the Year and Foreign Football of the Year. In the 14 games he scored in, Inter won 13 and drew 1. In the 20 games he didn't score in, Inter had a 9-6-5 record. Inter essentially relied on Zlatan. He finally scored more than three goals in a Champions League campaign too. Two against PSV and Seska Moscow, and one against Fenerbahce. Inter finished top of their group, where they met... Oh, it's Liverpool again. Inter was simply outclassed at Anfield and missed a series of chances in the San Siro to have any chance of coming back. Another disappointing year in Europe. On to the next year. Manager Mancini was sacked for his comments after the Liverpool game and in came Jose Mourinho from Chelsea. Zlatan was still at his world leading best and was only getting stronger with his best season yet. 25 goals in the league and yet another Scudetto. But just one goal and three assists in the Champions League. Inter was still able to once again progress to the knockout rounds, barely where they met yet again another Premier League side in Manchester United. After a close game at the San Siro, where there were few chances to take the lead, the second leg at Old Trafford became an intriguing contest. Vidic's header gave United the lead in the fourth minute. Then, Ibra got his head on the end of a Mykon cross, where it bounced off the rep ground and onto the crossbar. Ouch. Van der Sar pulled off an outrageous save to stop this shot from going in and in the 40th minute, Ibra was a whisker away from levelling the game. Nevertheless, Inter failed to beat United. Four games against Premier League sides, four defeats. Zlatan Ibrahimovic would watch on and see Barcelona players celebrate achieving his dream, a Champions League win. So, it's the summer of 2009 and Inter are on a pre-season tour in the United States, when reports start flying in about a potential swap deal 
between them and Barcelona for the services of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. With Samuel Eto'o going the other way, Ibra signed with Barca for what was rumoured to be around 65 million euros. The dream had come true. Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, Henri, Puyo, Piquet, Busquets, Dani Alves, wonderful tiki-taka football, all managed by Pep Guardiola. On his debut, he assisted Messi for the third of five goals they'd score to lift the Spanish Super Cup. In the league, he'd become the first Barcelona player to score in each of his first five league games. And in his first ever appearance in El Clasico, Zlatan scored just five minutes after being subbed on, which turned out to be the winning goal. The nearly 100,000 Barcelona fans began cheering his name. An incredible start to his career in Spain. He'd finished the season with 16 league goals, another league title, his fifth in a row, and a sixth Ballon d'Or nomination for 2009. In Europe, he'd score once and assist once in the group, score once and assist once against Stuttgart in the last 16, and for the first time ever in his career, Zlatan Ibrahimovic scored in England, twice in fact, against Arsenal. After missing the second leg at home, in which Barcelona thrashed Arsenal, Ibra was back in the starting lineup, just in time for a semi-final against Inter. In the first leg back in Milan, Barca took the lead thanks to a Pedro finish in the first half. But after an almost identical goal by Wesley Snyder and a smart finish by Maicon, Barcelona found themselves behind with 40 minutes left. And before they could do anything, it was free. Immediately after the goal, Ibra was hooked from the game. He wouldn't be pleased with that. 3-1 down in the first leg against his former team, Ibra was pissed. He confronted Pep about his tactics in the dressing room, something that had been irritating him all season. Words were exchanged, and to put it lightly, Pep and Zlatan didn't agree. Two strong personalities clashed, and there was only going to be one winner. In the second leg at the Nou Camp, Jose Mourinho's Inter produced one of the greatest defensive performances ever seen in the Champions League. The Italian side stifled what was arguably the greatest team ever to be put together, despite playing with more than an hour with 10 men. Inter would go on to the final held in Madrid and eventually win the Champions League with a 2-0 win against Bayern Munich. Almost every single one of Ibra's teammates including the man Inter swapped him for, have just lifted the Champions League trophy. Ibra did not like the way he was being used in the Barca system, and he certainly didn't like Pep Guardiola, which only spelled one thing. Ibrahimovic was out of Barcelona after one season. A loan move back to Milan was agreed, but this time it was to the Rossoneri. Joy was back on the face of Zlatan as he arrived at the airport in Milan where he was greeted by the thrilled Milan fans. He was back in the place he called home. Astonishingly, for the eighth season in a row, Ibra was a league champion again, the first for Milan in seven years, this time achieving the double-double, 14 goals and 12 assists despite missing nine games of the season. His team, which featured the likes of Seydorf, Perlo, Gattuso, Nesta and Inzaghi, stumbled through the group stage of the Champions League, winning just two games, both against French side Auxerre, with Ibra scoring more than half of their goals. Then, Ibra would once again have to face a Premier League team in the knockout rounds. This time, newcomers Tottenham Hotspur who had finished ahead of and beat the Milan rivals into in the group stage. The first leg at home was a fiery encounter which saw a brawl in the dugouts at full time, where Gattuso headbutted one of the Spurs' staff and Milan lost 1-0. Not what they needed at all. And after Milan failed to score in North London, 
it was another defeat for Zlatan at the hands of an English side. But worse was yet to come for the Swede. As on the 28th of May 2011, Wembley hosted the Champions League final between Manchester United and Barcelona, where the Catalans won their third Champions League in five seasons and fourth overall. And because Ibrahimovic never played a game for Barcelona that season, despite still being contracted to them, he does not get any recognition whatsoever for that Champions League winning team. For the second consecutive season, the team Zlatan Ibrahimovic just left had won the Champions League. In 2012, Ibrahimovic had his best scoring season to date, 28 goals in the league, a European Golden Foot for the first time ever, a Ballon d'Or nomination for the first time in three years, and this goal for Sweden against England. And the same old story in Europe. Facing English team in the last 16, get knocked out by your former team again. Everyone in Milan was ready for Ibrahimovic to repeat his heroics in 2013. Until these guys arrived. The ultra rich new kids on the block, Paris Saint Germain, came knocking, and off went Zlatan. PSG and Milan agreed a fee for 20 million euros which would see the big Swedes spend four eventful seasons in the capital of France. And would you know it, the same things that haunted Ibra in the past reared its ugly head once again. 2013, a goal and two assists against former team Barcelona, out on away goals. 2014, Ibra scores four against Anderlecht, including this thunderbolt which nearly ripped the net off PSG beats Chelsea 3-1 in Paris in the first leg. Ibra then suffers a torn muscle injury and misses the return leg, where PSG loses 2-0 out on away goals. 2015, PSG were on the right end of an away goals decider against Chelsea this time, before losing 5-1 on aggregate to eventual winners Barcelona. And finally, in 2016, after beating Chelsea once again, they fell to Manchester City 3-2 on aggregate. Barcelona Premier League, Barcelona Premier League. The two things that throughout most of his career, Ibrahimovic just couldn't get past. Zlatan Ibrahimovic would play another seven years of club football before retiring. In the summer of 2016, he would reunite with former coach Jose Mourinho at Manchester United where for the first time since leaving Malmo in 2001, Ibra wasn't playing in the Champions League. However, he did play a part in helping United win the Europa League at the end of the season, despite missing the final. The next year, however, Ibra suffered a cruciate ligament injury which took him out for most of the start of the season. He wasn't able to help United as they bowed out of the last 16 of the Champions League to Sevilla. He would spend a year in the MLS with LA Galaxy, marking his debut in the only way Ibra could, a 45-yard volley to announce his name on the American stage. He returned to Milan in 2019, where he played for the next four years, bringing home one more league title and having one last shot at the Champions League. Unfortunately for Zlatan, after playing through an ACL injury for six months, he needed knee surgery which would see him sidelined for the next seven months, which meant that he wasn't selected for Milan's Champions League squad for the 2022-2023 season, a season where Milan made the semi-finals to play their city rivals, Inter. Who knows what he could have done that season. Despite the many individual accolades and the many trophies won in his career, a combination of seriously bad luck and poor decisions left him without a Champions League winner's medal. Nevertheless, he's still one of the greatest ever footballers and I doubt that he cares that much about one more trophy.